Hi everyone, welcome back. I have a parcel to unbox today. I've been waiting for this for ages. And finally I get time. Get ready, it's pink. <laughs> so, um, I've picked up the Paul Rubens watercolor set, but it is beautiful. Um, beautiful colors, I watched a lot of videos of people unboxing and swatching etc and it does look really lovely um, my friend Hannah from Hannah's Haven has one of those little sets and um, they looked gorgeous so I did some watercolor in my Hobonichi a couple of weeks ago and fell in love so um, I decided I wanted to add some nice watercolors to my collection. I've just in the past been using this cheapo from Officeworks here in Melbourne. Uh, but I also do have the Colero um, pearl colors as well, which are beautiful. Um, and they were really nice to put in my journal. So anyway, let's have a look at the box. It says here, artists transparent watercolor, fine artists watercolors. Um, Paul Rubens here and as you can see it's a beautiful pink box and then inside so lovely um, inside the actual um, paint tin is wrapped in this beautiful soft um, cloth with Paul, the Paul Rubens um, logo on there and if we open you can see the actual paint set itself is pink so that was one of the driving factors behind this right but I first once I um, saw the case and really really loved the concept I um, watched a lot of videos where people have been very happy with the colors in this set so let me just open it up and we'll go through these in a minute as you can see um, well hopefully you can see it's a 48 um, set so we have here all the colors um, and they're all um, in uh, Mandarin I guess um, so handily though I think on here you will see that the color is written on the actual um, paint itself but it does provide you with this little chart that you can use to swatch on. So I will probably do that. All right, let's have a look at the paints themselves. I have seen that they're quite difficult to get out, um, but hopefully you can see on here it says titanium white and it's A203. And then on the color chart, we have A203. It doesn't say platinum white, but what I've seen a lot, I mean, titanium white, what I've seen a lot of people do is take this off and um, stick it to that chart. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take all of these off and I'll be back with you in a little while. I suspect this might take me a little while. Okay, let me show you what I've been doing. So the... Um, Paints were aligned, these ones were in this section. I don't know if you remember. Um, I've moved them across to this section because in the color chart, that's how they are. This is this is these ones here on the left, and then I'm just gonna go left to right across the page. I think that makes much more sense. Uh, I am sticking these in, but I'm thinking what I might do is just cut off the barcode area because I need this space here to swatch this one. So I'll muck about with that later, but um, that's the plan so far. What I'm also doing, uh, I'll show you actually. So here's my next one. I'm just taking this label off. Um, for some reason, I'm keeping this bit attached. I guess just in case I lose it or whatever. Uh, and to make it fit on the page, I'm just chopping off this part here. And I am going to chop this label off as well, so I might as well do, do this one while I'm at it. And then I'm sticking this down next to it. This is going to be on a fold actually, which is a bit of a pain. Um, 
you know what, I think I can cover up some of this blue from what I've been learning. Um, because what I really just need is that, that number there, which says D215 cadmium red, and it's there as well, D215. And just for extra precaution, I'm just using a Sharpie to write D215 on the bottom as well, just so I don't get too confused. Just so I don't get too confused. So I'll, I'll just continue along and do the rest of these. But what I'm thinking I might do is make myself another one of these um, with uh, the the number and the words in larger font for starters, because they're a bit small to see. This is titanium white, Naples yellow light, permanent lemon yellow, cadmium red here. So um, it's just a bit hard to read. So I think I'll just lay all these out and then I'll decide when I start to swatch, I'll decide whether I want to do it on here or if I just make myself a new one, in which case all of this will have been for nothing. <laughs> but um, it is what it is, yeah? <laughs> okay, I'll be back soon. Okay, so I'm about halfway through. I just thought I'd show you the construction of this holder itself. So as you can see, it holds um, 24 on each side. So 12, 12, 12, 12 to make 48. And um, these little guys are held in pretty strongly with these kind of rivet, rivet things. And as you can see, when I turn it upside down, they won't fall out. And that's because when you put uh, the little pan back in, you have to give it quite a bit of force to push it in to the holder. And then it does have this little rounded kind of lip over the top that d will stop it from falling out. But also, you know, they're a little bit bigger than the space allows, if you like. So they really are tight in there. So then the case itself has a little um, holder here for you to hang on to your palette if you were to be doing some work outside. And then this just sits nicely in here. That will fall out if you turn it upside down. I'm not gonna demonstrate because it's too noisy, but um, you could potentially put something underneath it to hold it in if you wanted to. But yeah, it just sits nicely in there. And then we have all this space here to mix our colors with. So I'm gonna continue on I've just been sticking these in here and as you can see they don't stick very well. I could put some tape over them. I'm really not sure. I think what I will do is look online to see if anyone has made an English version of this colour chart and if so print that out and use it. Um, but otherwise I'll just make one or I'll just use this one and tape that down like I said. I haven't quite decided. I think I'll decide tonight while I'm watching TV and then I'll probably swatch tomorrow because the sun's setting right now and I think I'm going to lose some light soon. So I don't think I'll get to swatching tonight, but I'll do that in the morning. So I'll continue on and I'll see you soon. Hi everyone, it's the next day and I have um, managed to put all of the little labels down on this sheet. But also, look, let me show you. If I was to put this, I can't store this inside of this case. It is just too big. I'm not quite sure why they've made it this size because as you can see, they've had to fold it to fit it in here. So what I've done, I mean, I've added all the labels to here and I've just put some scotch tape over in a big strip just to hold them down. And I've kept the number. So there's both the number of the uh, color A203 here, but it's also written on the label A203 titanium white. But some of them are very difficult to read because they're on that color. And um, so what I did was make my own color chart. And I've just used cardstock, so it's not watercolor paper, but I'm probably not gonna use watercolor paper all that often. I'm most likely gonna be watercoloring in my Hobonichi and maybe occasionally on other papers. But um, for now, at least, it's gonna be on Hobonichi paper. Um, but also, um, I just thought I would use cardstock for the moment um, because I could get it easily. I do have watercolor paper, but I just don't feel like I want to have something quite so thick in this case to carry around with me. So I've just hand drawn um, these lines with these little pans with um, my favorite Castell Pit Artist pen uh, because it is waterproof and I'm hoping that's the case when I start swatching. Uh, and I've written the name, the number and the name for each colour there as well. And I've used the same pen throughout. For titanium white, I've put a dark black um, 
line there so that I can um, see how opaque the white is. And by the looks of it, it is quite opaque. So I thought I might swatch on both. I'll just see how the time goes, I guess. But I need to hurry up and get started. So here's the set and I've got them. I might just turn that around actually, just for my own brain. So I've got them aligned such that they're gonna match up here. So we've got 203 titanium white here, and this is D215 cadmium red. So it's just for my brain, it's gonna be the same when I have this side by side. Uh, one thing I want to point out is we've got four big mixing panels here, and then we've got the smaller ones here. I guess there's, I guess there's eight, yeah, there's eight. But also underneath, there's a bunch more wells so you could, if you wanted to, take this out completely and you've got this whole massive mixing place happening here. So normally people would spray this with a water bottle, but I don't actually have a spray bottle handy with me today. So I've just got this little eyedropper. I just thought I would go ahead and put a few drops of water onto each and... That way I can just let it settle for a bit and get soft and then I can swatch. So I'm just going to do like a main colour today. I'm not going to mix anything or um, be too transparent with the colour. I'll, I'll just let it kind of fade itself out into the page. But um, yeah, I'm going to play with these today, which is why I'm trying to get this done this morning. Oh, that looks like it's going to be my favourite colour. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm going to be doing some watercolour today with my friend Trish from Hobby Hoppers and I really want to get this swatched so we can see the colours but also I need it to dry before I go. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to, as I said, pop all these down and I might just uh, fast forward through the rest. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. So off to the side here, I've just got two cups of water. Um, one will be my dirty water and one will be my cleanish water. And I think I might just use a smallish brush here. This is a number six brush. This is a Princeton shader if anyone cares. <laughs> and I have some paper towel here as well off to the side. So like I said, I'm thinking I'm doing both, but I don't know if I really need to do this one because I'm not sure I'm actually going to use it. But let's just get started with Titanium White. I have watched a few videos and it feels like this is a bit of an, a, quite an opaque white, which we'll see as it goes over that black. And it is, I'm just pulling out some of that black actually. So very white, very nice. So, you know, I'm not a watercolour artist <laughs> at, at all. Um, what I want to use this for is just to make some kind of abstract things in my... Apparently I'm not doing that chart, by the way. <laughs> um, in my Hobonichi, just for fun. Creative journaling kind of thing. And yeah, I think that'll just make me happy. So um, that's why I'm doing this. And the colors that I did have before, I think I showed you yesterday were my just Officeworks um, kind of no-name brand ones. And they're nice, but they're just kind of, um, the, the you know, you can see by the palette itself in the colors that the colors are very um, different. They You know, you can see the colors really well in the palette, which to me, these ones are very dark and you kind of almost don't know what the color is going to be like until you hit it with water. So these are much more heavily pigmented, as you can see. Look at those. They're just beautiful. So um, I think the others are already quite watered down. So you're not going to get the same kind of effects that you would with these ones. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm loving these colors. They're so vibrant. And I was thinking I'd be able to kind of water that out a little on the end, but um, they're quite opaque, so I'm not going to be able to do that in this particular swatch. But that's good. I kind of like to see what the colour is going to look like before it, before it waters out. So I'll just tell you, a bit of my brush has come off there. I'll just tell you, in case you can't see, 
what those colors are called. At the top there we have titanium white and you can see as it's drying it's lightening up of course as they do. Um, then we come down to Naples yellow, permanent lemon yellow, cadmium medium yellow, cadmium orange yellow, we've got permanent medium yellow and then this next one is transparent medium yellow. Okay, now here is where the colors start to change a little. We have nickel yellow. So this is a kind of almost mustard yellow kind of color. And now we're gonna move into the oranges and the reds. So this one is permanent orange red. And that would probably be pretty close to my brother's favorite color. <laughs> he does love orange. And then light cadmium red, which to me looks pretty orange in the palette. And then Chinese red is next. I'm keen to see this one. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that color. I love it. And now we're going to head into the pinky colors, which you know is my jam. First up, cadmium red. Another beautiful red. And scarlet. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? And here we go with rose red. And that is a beautiful shade of pink. I've put um, a little bit extra water on the brush for that one because I really wanted to see how it looks. Love! And matter red. And then we have magenta. A bit more water on that, I think. Here we go, magenta. And you know, I love that pink mixed with purple kind of color. That's some of my favorites, as I'm sure you know. Those of you who <laughs> uh, watch my videos. Okay, next up is violet. And it's very nice, just continuing that a bit extra purple in the pink. I can see that's going to be a nice color. And then permanent purple. Yeah, definitely purple. I can't wait to see these drying, actually. It's going to be nice to see how they lighten up when they dry. Next up is Royal Purple. That's kind of a lighter version of that permanent purple, but with maybe a bit, a bit more blue in it. And then we have Cobalt Blue. This looks beautiful. Oh yeah, that's very nice. Very nice, clean blue color, love it. Now we have France Ultramarine, which I'm intrigued by. That had a bit more water, even though I need this palette to dry. Oh, that's nice too, right? That's kind of a royal blue almost, a bit lighter. I hope you don't mind me yammering on while I do this. <laughs> okay, peacock blue sounds like it'll be very nice. Yeah, look at that, kind of a teal blue. That's really nice, I like that a lot. And now sky blue last one in this first set of 24 and even that has a little tinge of green to it as well okay I think they're lovely very nice okay next up we have sea blue and hopefully my pans aren't drying out too much for me to do this just add a little more water to the brush we're starting to get that really, I don't know, the beautiful hint of green in 
in the color, but still very blue. When it washes out on, I don't know if I can put this in the frame, but when it washes out here on my little palette, on my um, paper towel, you can see it really has that hint of green to it. Now we have Prussian blue, which is quite similar when it first goes down. Let's see how that one dries out. And Payne's Grey. Now I think this is going to be a bluish grey. Let's see. Oh, it's very dark when it's first going on, but you can see there is um, definite uh, blue-grey. And that should lighten up okay. Now we have Indigo. Oh, that's nice. It's murky kind of blue very mysterious kind of color and now we're switching it up really to the light turquoise green ah oh, love it that's a beautiful you know a tiffany green even and then next is the deep turquoise green so we'll see how that compares yeah that's nice too and malachite green I have a history with this color. Um, the scientists among you will know that we use this as a dye um, to um, let us know whether something has worked or not in an experiment. <laughs> That's as much as I'll go into that. But uh, except to say that it did um, stain everything <laughs> in the lab. Here we have dark emerald, which is a bit similar actually to malachite, but um, I think the malachite is going to lighten up quite a bit as it dries. And now we have hooker's green. Oh, we've lost some water on that one. Hooker's green light, in fact. Oh yeah, it has that kind of grassy color, which is quite cool. <laughs> I'm loving the mess I'm making on this paper towel here. Yeah, those greens really stick to the brush. Okay, olive green. I do kind of like the idea of having a play with some leafy kind of patterns. It's a very dirty color, but um, nice for leafy patterns, I think. And then we have tree green, which sounds delightful. Definitely tree-ish. And then permanent green, which sounds ominous. Well, that's nice. It's kind of a true green, I guess. I guess you could say. All right, now we have yellow green. Definitely yellow green. We have lemon ochre. Well, that is that mustardy color as well. Like I called this nickel, nickel yellow mustard before. Oops, I just went into my clean water instead of my dirty water. Um, oh, I've named these both the same thing. Obviously, I'm wrong. Uh, this, this one was lemon sienna, actually. The next one I'm going to do is lemon ochre. Which is a darker version of that. Oh, and it goes quite orange when it's like an orangey um, brown, I guess you could say. Now we have Naples yellow. Oh, that's very um, translucent. Let's see if I can get a little more on the brush. So quite a translucent color already. And then we have raw sienna, and this one looks very dark in the palette, as does the, the next one as well. Oh, but it does have a transparent kind of quality to it, doesn't it? Okay, next is burnt sienna. I'm going to need a bit more water on that one. Okay. Oh, that's nice, like a rich, rich kind of brown. 
And then we have Puzuli Red Ochre. That's a very smooth colour. Next up is Van Dyke Brown, which looks almost black in the palette. And yeah, it is very dark, but definitely brown. Oh, it comes out very black on the, on the cloth here. Next, we have Burnt Ochre. Another dark one. Oh, but that's nice. Kind of tree brown, like you could say. And then we have Burnt Brown. That's kind of a, you know, greyish brown. Very nice. Ivory black. Now, ivory and black are not really the same thing, are they? But let's see. Oh, yeah. So that's a nice grey. And then lastly, we have coal black, which I suspect will be quite black. Yes, it is. Very nice. Oh, yay. I'm excited. <laughs> and finally, I have it done. So I can start to use these. All right, let's have a look. Um, oh, I love swatches. They're just so pretty to look at. You can see as the white is drying, it's starting to have some transparency over that black line there. So I'm going to leave these to dry and I'll show you when they are dry so you can get a better idea of the colours. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm actually just going to do the same thing on here. Um, I'll probably leave the camera running and just um, speed through it. Just jumping in here to show you, I'm just putting down a bit of water um, on where I'm going to do the swatch because I think for this one, since I'm doing it, I might as well use it for something useful. Um, I'm just going to see how the, water, the colors disperse if I can. Um, I might not be doing a great job of it, but at least I'm giving something there for the, water, for the color to sit in and see if it kind of, see how it's just dispersing there. Um, I might not be giving it enough space and I kind of decided to do this halfway through the first, <laughs> first column. So um, yeah, that's beautiful. So maybe I'll in, in these next ones, just maybe not quite use as much paint at the end of the line as I did on the others. Anyway, just my rambling thoughts. Okay, so there we go. This is um, the second swatch and, you know, I've tried to do a little more watercolour look than the opaqueness of the first set. So again, super excited to see how these dry. Um, remember, this doesn't fit in my, my um, palette set, so um, I'd have to carry this separately if I was taking it with me. But I mean, it's nice, it's nice to try it out and I like to have these little um, tags that came off the pans just for fun anyway. Um, let's have a look at how the other one is drying. It's not, <laughs> it's taking its time, but it is quite a cool morning here in Melbourne. Oh, I've got yellow paint on me. Um, so it might take a little bit longer to dry. As you can see, it's really buckling my cardstock here as well, but it also buckled this um, watercolor paper too. So I'm going to pop these in some sun if I can find it just to dry off and we might have another quick look um, before I head off today to do some actual watercoloring. In the meantime, let me show you. Oh, first, um, this one is a bit muddy, but I really love how this has turned out. I might um, cut that up and pop it in my journal once it dries. 
just as a little keepsake of what happened today. Uh, I just wanted to show you, I've showed you this before, but this is um, what I did with Trisha's um, Gansai Tambi paints. And I thought I might have a go at reproducing this or something similar to it. I did use these Colero uh, pearl colors um, to get the splatter and other shiny bits over the top. So um, that's probably what I'll do today with Trish. Um, just have a play about and see what I can um, see what I can create with this watercolor set. I am loving the colors. I think it's just beautiful. And again, it's way better than using the, you know, just the cheapo set. I think. So that's that. I'll take this with me today and I'll do some stuff in here. I suspect. But anyway, let's let this dry. I'll I'll clean up and we'll come back and take a look when the when the um, paints are dry. See you soon. Okay, here we go. It's been maybe 45 minutes or so. They're not completely dry. I'll grab this one first because it's the first one that I did. Um, nearly there. You can see maybe the shine on some of them. This um, Payne's Grey here is still a bit wet. But the rest of... Oh, and Cobalt Blue. It's just, a, I think, a matter of how much water I've put down there. But um, I think you can tell that they've lightened up as they've dried. And I'm really happy with these colours. I can't wait. Um, as you can expect, this is a very nice chunk of colour for me, the rose red through violet. And I'm always fond of turquoise greens as well. So they're going to feature pretty heavily, I suspect. Um, I'll just switch to the other one, even though it's still quite wet. But... Um, I think what's good about this one is it just shows you the lightness that you can expect in the colors. So you've got, you know, this, this branching out into the water, which is very nice to see. So um, not quite dry enough to travel with, I don't think, but I might just pop them in the back seat of the car like they are so that we have a reference today. But uh, yeah, really happy with this set. So so just a reminder of the set, it's the Paul Rubens Artists Watercolor Transparent 48 pack. They do come in, I think, 24 and 12 as well. Um, and I got mine from Amazon. Um, I'll leave the details below. I can't actually remember the price because I did buy another set as well that haven't arrived yet, which I will share with you next time. These are still a bit wet, but I think that's going to be totally fine. It's not like they're pooling or anything. So um, I will um, let you know how I go with this. I've been watching quite a few videos um, about people using the set in particular. Um, and it's good. People love it. Uh, they, they're saying, you know, these are sing single pigment inks in most cases. I think there's a couple that aren't. Um, and that's very good because you don't get such muddiness in your colors when you're mixing them. So if you have lots of different pigments in one color and then you mix with another color, then you're mixing all sorts of stuff together and it can turn out quite muddy. So it's very good that this is a single pigment set. So it should get nice kind of bright, uh, clean colors, which is what I like. And even in these, um, these uh, paper towel bits it still looks quite nice actually there's a couple of muddy areas of course but I quite enjoy that color I've just left them to dry because I think I might um keep those as I said earlier so this cloth I think is meant to be to, to wipe your brush on but it is pink and beautiful so that's not going to happen I'm just going to keep it to keep the tin in I think We'll see what happens. Um, and as I said earlier, this swatch chart is one that I can fold and store inside the tin. So I probably won't keep it in this box. I suspect it's going to be too cumbersome to do that. But um, once this is dry, I'll fold it up and put it inside the actual tin so I can carry this with me. Uh, this one, I'll, I don't know, I'll just keep this one hanging around, I suppose. Um, I, I quite like, I quite like, as I said, the um, being able to see how the colour will lighten with watering down. Okay, so that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed uh, this little video, a little bit different to my usual ones. Um, but really keen to start doing this in my Hobonichi and other places as well. Can't wait to get started and I'm going to do that later today. 
So thanks so much for watching. Um, let me know what you think and I'll see you all again super, super soon. Bye.